Shane, we're going to just get straight into this because this is the Jerry Podcast 2.0. Ooh, let's do it. Mm, because as you regular listeners of the show will know, Josh abandoned us to do parenting or something. I don't know. It can't be that important. He needs his priorities. And, uh, now it's, it, exactly. And now it's just me and Shane. And that's yeah. it. That's that's all it is. So we're going to have a regular guest on um, to to make it a trio because three is a party, I'm told yeah. by some people. I'm pretty sure. So, Shane, you don't know who this guest is. We have a guest. A guest this week? Yes, of course we do. They are currently waiting in the wings, and I'm going to give you some clues. Uh, No, not literally. They're not. (laughs) Although, imagine if they suddenly came in to your carriage. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Now, this person, um, it's it's a she, but I already gave that away multiple times. You know, you Uh, told me earlier, and you said, I don't follow her on Instagram, which bad on no, me. No, I went and so checked. I stalked your Instagram for all of the women that what? I might not be following. <laughs> and you, you can't I, score by that as a category. <laughs> well, I'm I'm going to say my guess is Laurie Greenland. Uh, but, no, that's a that's a man. Oh, I was just looking at all the female <laughs> names. <laughs> Laurie I was Greenland? expecting Laurie Greenland. Oh, every time I I am amazed that you're like just uh, uh, what's the word I'm even looking for? I'm so unawareness. Out okay, How so- unaware. He won a World Cup last year. A down I know. <laughs> Give me some clues. Give me some clues. Okay, they are actually a former UCI mountain bike world champion. Okay. You can't say former when you're talking about world champion. Once a world champion, always a world okay. champion. Okay, okay, world champion. But this was a while ago. Uh, oh, I don't actually know. We'll have to ask her. Uh, but oh, okay. the discipline is something a little bit different. And she's actually more well-known for her stage racing. What? So long distances, like uh, BC Bike Race and I think the Yak Attack and she's she's won a lot of things. In okay. fact, we did the same race, and she beat me by, I guess, uh, a couple of hours. Oh, <laughs> you're, you're building up the hype. Okay, yeah. more oh, clues. big time. Um, she is also a successful podcast host. Podcast. Mm. Okay. So we could ask this for some tips because we don't know what we're doing. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, uh, she's written a cookbook, a plant-based cookbook. Uh, okay, I think I'm picking up what you're throwing down okay uh she has actually been uh in i was gonna say involved that's the that's the (laughs) wrong word for it however our friend brian bkxc has featured her in some ways and has been a guest on her podcast as well oh okay Mm -hmm. and uh, the final fact is that she's in fact a sock entrepreneur with the brand Mm. moxie and grit let me ask you this are these socks you can ask away are these socks a little bit loony oh i say shane i think i know who it is mm, hey guys this is a mountain bike podcast a mountain biking podcast an mtb podcast about mountain biking we talk about bikes but in a way we don't you never know by the name it's the joey podcast now known as joey mountain bike podcast for search engine optimization joey fans please welcome to the show sonia looney hey, well, so- oh, you sound all professional like you've done this before well first of all we got to talk about why you don't follow me on instagram <laughs> oh <laughs> shame. I, I let my wife follow all that okay here let me uh <laughs> <laughs> so Can Sonia, right oh, the, shame, the shame follow. The you shame, know, the Shane shame follow. Sonia, <laughs> so Sonia here, Looney one. The- Is there a Sonia Looney zero? No, forty-two thousand followers. You don't even need my follow, but there you go. <laughs> there, there is a Sonia, a Sonia Looney that has the name, but it's this like lady who's posted all these. Like four selfies, maybe, and they're posted like six or seven years ago. So if you look up the original Sonia Looney, you might be surprised. Oh, <laughs> no. Did you have you not messaged this person to say, hey, 
Can oh, yeah. I just have my name? There's oh, no wow. way she checks her DMs. Yeah, and I've messaged Instagram, but that's okay. I'll just be one. Sonia, yeah. let me one. You are there, are, one. there are actually lots of famous people that have one at the end. Actually, man bike is Brendan Fairclough. I can think he has like Brendan Brendog one. Hmm. There's a couple of there's a couple of other people that have one at the end. Well, well what we need Paul the punter one. Paul the punter one. No way. No way. <laughs> when I was funny stalking. Story, funny story actually. So the news, one of the news anchors for Global BC, he is called Paul Hasem. Oh. And uh, years ago, I changed my Twitter name and I tried to change it back to Paul Hasem, but. He had swooped in and taken it. <laughs> you could have sold it to him. Yeah, so I did. I tried to sell him my Instagram one. I was messaging him and everything. And I was like, I said 600 bucks. And, you know, I was like, that's such like a attractive number because it's not yeah. like expensive. It's yeah. not cheap. But I could have done and bought myself something fun with it. But he said no in the end. So what I've done is I created another one. Changed that to Paul at Paul Hasem. So I still have it. And then I changed my real one to at Paul the Punter. When I was stalking you on Instagram looking for this possible female, I noticed that you follow Paul Paul the Punter follows like three different Paul Hasem accounts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's yeah. one that's like Paul Hasem MTB Punter. Like <laughs> it's like, oh, it's like no. you were you were dabbling Maybe. in the punter, but then you yeah. finally decided on it. That's it. Okay, anyway, enough of that. Welcome, one and all, to, as I said before, Jerry Podcast 2.0. Um, some things have changed. Josh is no longer with us. Yes, he is dead to us. Yep. And uh, But it's still going to be me, Paul, otherwise known as Paul the Punter on YouTube, and my co-host, Shanene, or Shane the Crashing Dad. And he sounds Shanene. like this. Shanene, that's that's me. Okay. Oh, We're gonna- <laughs> just that voice every time. And our guest, Sonia Looney. Welcome. Soon to be the crushing mom. Oh, oh yeah, no, that was your most all... recent Instagram post. It was pretty rad. Uh, there is. Oh, of course, yes, you are going to be. So, oh, I'm so confused. Just don't. I've crash. had quite. I've had quite the day of it. In all honesty, mm-hmm. but we we're going to get. We're going to get into it. Um, okay, so Sonia, how we start every one of our episodes is with taking a look at last week's comments. It's last week's comments. Shane. Oh, so Sonia, you have the document with everything on. Mm-hmm. Uh, why don't you take us away with the first comment for from Radley Radley Bean? Well, so his is more of a question. In the comments, there were so many comments asking for Bobo to take over for Josh. Uh, that, was, that was like the main comment of last week's thread. Okay, Sonia, yeah. have you have you ever heard of biking with Bobo? No, I haven't. Okay, he's quite the loose unit, and he's at the moment he's quite injured as well. So oh, he was riding in front of me, tried to do this jump, and went severely over the bars, and has a grade five separated shoulder that he's trying to recover from. So, which takes six months actually to recover from, which is pretty nuts. Uh, what's Hey, what was your worst injury? Why don't we start off with that? We can start. We can in- integrate some questions, Shane. Like, yes, we do what we want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sonia, what was your your worst injury? It's actually pretty funny the story. Uh, so I was going. I was in New Zealand and I was defending my world champion status, twenty four hour race. Oh, hold on. What do you mean, okay. world champion in in the? Not- so it's actually not UCI. It's Wembo, which is a different governing body. Um, so I just, yeah, it's not a UCI World Championship. Oh, isn't it? Oh, I thought. So it, what no. jersey do you get if not the rainbow? You, you still, you still get a rainbow jersey. It's not the UCI branded colors. In fact, there's a company I knew, and they made some like World Champion socks, not for me, but they use the UCI colors. And then they got, I think they're like getting sued by the UCI for using their co- <gasps> like the order of the colors. So it's very specifically not the UCI like wow. order. Yeah, but it's Enjoy still that. a rainbow jersey. It's still it's still world champion, legit world champion status. Um, it's just not designated by the UCI. Um, oh. However, I was defending my uh, title in New Zealand, and I was out on uh, just an easy ride with someone, and we were riding on a wet bridge. Wasn't paying attention. Pulled my, I guess, what's the female equivalent of Joey 
Maybe it's going to be called the loony. Oh, it's, it, it, tra- loony. it transcends any possible gender <laughs> categorization. So still Joey then. Mm-hmm. I went I yeah. went full Joey and I somehow, I didn't know the bridge was wet, tapped my brakes, rode straight off this bridge and landed on my head. <sighs> and then I couldn't race. So I flew all the way to New Zealand to do a 24-hour race to defend my title. Um, crashed on my head, had a really bad concussion, and that was that. But oh, the positive my. thing is I actually, this is a little known secret that I'm only going to share with Joey podcast listeners. Yes. No I actually don't enjoy 24 hour racing because I enjoy sleeping. <laughs> my husband said, this is, this is awesome. This, this happened because you would have kept winning all the 24 hour races and then you would have had to keep going every year and doing worlds. And now you don't have to anymore. So that's true. When you did win the world championship Jersey for the 24 hour, how far ahead were you? Cause like the gaps get huge, right? Uh, I don't remember exactly. I think probably a lap, which is probably an hour, which over 24 hours is really not that much. Um, the interesting thing about really long races is that the gaps usually don't open up right away. So there's a lot of patience involved and I didn't really ride away until like in the middle of the night. So you wow. have to move. yeah, wait till it gets dark and then make your move. When no one can say, oh, don't you wait till it gets dark. Then you <laughs> Let me write this down to bring up over my future 24 hour career. But yeah, it does wow. sound like you would have kept winning. If you, I mean, if you won by an hour, I guess if it's not a small margin, but. Is it, is it, is it like, I guess it's the distance that you travel, right? Over 24 hours. Like that's the. Yeah. It's like, is that how you win? You ride, you ride in laps. That's yeah. why, another reason why I'm not a big 24 hour person. Cause I, I like, I don't like lap riding. Um, but yeah, it's whoever rides the most laps in 24 hours. Oh, oh that that's sounds crazy. miserable. So how much, how much, do you know how much further you went than second place? Uh, probably like 20 miles. I, I don't know. I, I actually don't know. I'd have to look up exactly like 20 many. miles. Wow. Yeah, but then I think one hour and it must've been more than an hour because I was just thinking about how long a lap was. Oh, that's crazy. Oh. Did you know that did, if you lap them, did you ever like get cocky and like sit down and be like, yep, yeah, I'm just going to sit here, drink a cup of tea, <laughs> take a nap. <laughs> yeah. yeah, generally not a good idea because things can go wrong. Like people actually go blind in 24 hour races. Like some of the top what? men actually, yeah, they, what? some of the top men actually do go blind and have to drop out. Like it's really common. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Uh, why so, why like, blind? Temporary I blindness. Don't. Yeah, they they like can't see and they have to quit. Like, I don't know why. What? Wow, just the men though, right? Uh, I, it's happened with women as well. But I was just thinking about okay. some of the races that I've been at, and it's usually, well, maybe you just don't hear about it as much. But I hear about the top men going blind and having to drop out, which wow. would be pretty scary. I have yeah. to say. Can well, you imagine just riding along and then all of a sudden just? But why? Like, what cause? Is it just like fatigue or? I don't know. I've seen people wearing like ski goggles in 24 hour racing. <laughs> oh, no. I think, and I, I think oh, it has no. to do like, no, but these are like top people. So I think it has to do with, I don't know, maybe airflow. I didn't go blind. I've never gone blind in a 24 hour race. So uh, how many have you lucky. done? Uh, mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Too many to count. Well, pay me impressed. I am impressed. <laughs> oh, that's a nice comment. Okay, so um, I think, yeah, last week's comments, it has been a while since we did a podcast. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> last we're, month's get back comments. To, yeah, last month's comments. We're gonna get we're gonna get back into it. We have lots of Joey nominations. So um we'll we're gonna be back on a regular time schedule now. So um yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna have more next week so sonia you're actually going to appear twice i guess in the podcast because people will have lots of comments about that (laughs) now um i've completely blown it because actually what we start off with is talking about where we've ridden this week or last week however you want to look at it um now sonia as you mentioned before you are actually rather pregnant yeah if i actually live somewhere where there was outdoor riding at the moment I would be riding outside. The last place I rode outside was over Christmas and New Year's and it was in Sedona and in Albuquerque. But all my riding since I got home, I live in Kelowna, BC, it has been on the trainer. So yeah, pretty exciting. It still counts. Oh. It still yeah. counts. But but you're how how pregnant are you? Like as in how like long? Eight and a half months. 
Oh, whoa. Wow. Oh, yeah. Like 37, 38 weeks. Uh, oh. No, like 34, 30, yeah, 34. Oh. Wow. That's crazy. And you're still, still right. Like, yeah, what are the, what are some of the differences that you've found? Obviously, there's a, a whole other being inside of you, but like, what do you, what do you find the differences are when you're mountain biking? Uh, amazingly, not that much. Um, people are very judgmental about the fact that I'm mountain biking. And I wrote about that on my blog because people are afraid that you're going to crash, but everybody's skill level is different. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely slower because I've, I've gained like, I don't know the exact number today, but on the order of 20 to 25 pounds. So imagine carrying that much weight all the time. So steep stuff is much harder, but I've also noticed that going downhill is easier because I have more momentum. So I actually pick up speed faster, which is kind of awesome. <laughs> oh man. The benefits of pregnant riding. Do you feel, That's do you right. find that you fatigue quicker though? Not really. Um, wow. No, I'm not riding super hard though. Like I'm riding at a pace that is comfortable and I'm not, I'm not trying to go fast. Mm. I'm just riding for fu like for fun. And people are still judging you on the trail. Well, it's cause I like riding technical stuff still. Like I don't want to just ride the, the easy trails. I'm not riding anything where I feel like there's a risk, but what I think is easy and I could ride with my eyes closed. Somebody else might think is really technical and Likewise, like when I'm in Squamish riding with people, I see people riding stuff and for them it's easy. And to me, it looks like really extreme. So everybody's skill level and comfort level is different. So yeah, I'd say don't tell somebody not to ride something because you don't know what their skill level is. Mm. I think when it comes into this situation as well, it's more people have like the, well, I wouldn't do that or I would be afraid to do that. So then they're going to project that emotion onto you and it comes across as, well, it's it's them saying, oh, no, don't do that because it's they wouldn't do it or they wouldn't think it was a good idea or whatever. And that's, I think that's quite common as for human beings, right, to do that kind of yeah. judging and like, oh, don't do that because I wouldn't do it. But yeah, they take it up a notch whenever you're pregnant because they're like, oh, that's so irresponsible and blah, blah, blah. But that's OK. I like making waves. Well, <laughs> yeah. plug your blog. What's your blog? Oh, it's really original. It's sonyalooney.com slash blog. Oh, nice. Hey, you had a, on your podcast, you had a really interesting guest. I haven't got around to listening to it yet. So you can pretty much tell us most of it, but I do want to listen to it with the, the person, the, the main dude from Game Changers, the movie, oh, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Shane, have you seen that yet? I have not. Game Changers? Oh, come on. Are you serious? <laughs> So out of it. You're in the Crashing Mum Netflix all the time. I know. How have you not seen this movie? We are on Netflix, like doing Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, and <laughs> at 10 p.m. Give, you give turn that off. off. <laughs> Is this movie out? Game Changers. Oh my God, Shane. I, Shane, as a as a pescatarian yourself. So I said, Sonia, could you want to give like a brief overview to Shane about what it's about? Yeah, it's basically about how you can, like, can I cuss on this podcast? Yeah. Yeah, do whatever. Yeah. 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 How you can kick out, how eating a plant-based diet helps you kick ass as an athlete and be even stronger and recover even faster. And they actually, what I loved about it, and this was actually a criticism people had. They're like, oh, it's, they, they have way too many, like, muscly guys and it's, it's, it's made more for a male audience. But I think that that's good. Like, I think that. Um, I am an endurance athlete and there are lots of endurance athletes that are promoted as plant-based, but I think showing like they had this guy, Patrick Baboumian, and he's the strongest man in the world. Like, I, I don't even know. It shows him like picking up cars and things like that. <laughs> and he plants based. And, and then it shows these weightlifters and these ultimate fighters. And there's this, uh, threat to masculinity, I think for some people about eating plant-based diet and not eating meat. So just showing that you can still be jacked out of your mind and really strong, um, and they also have a, a little clip about um, harder erections. <laughs> yeah, oh. that's what I was going to bring up to Shane. Oh. They measure they measure how hard your penis goes, basically. How does that measured? Like the squeeze oh, test? I would watch the movie. But oh. there's, there's string. There's string. They test it at night, basically. Uh, at night. <laughs> your your nighttime bonus. Well, now now I'm excited for this movie. So do I have You're to quit? Then. Do I have to quit the fish and shrimp and crab? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Well, crashing mum, if you're watching this, Sonia Looney told me for harder erections. 
<laughs> to <laughs> quit the seafood. <laughs> oh, or this is going on. Quit, quit it for that night, even. There you go. <laughs> that, yeah. Night. Apparently, it makes the difference. Night. It's that love quick. You long time. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, but <laughs> but what did did he did he did he bring up anything about kind of cycling as a topic specifically? Although your po- I guess your podcast isn't really like bike based. Uh, we didn't talk about cycling specific in there, but in the in the movie The Game Changers, they have an Olympian female named Dotsie Bausch, so they cover her as a as an athlete and as a cyclist. Uh, okay, I I can't quite remember, but She's I know like there's a track, been a, a track cyclist. So. Uh, there you go. That's that's why I don't I don't I'm not really that interested in velodrome stuff. Yeah, but yeah, no, I do. It's it's really interesting, Shane. Um, but yeah, I mean, did you get a good reception from from your listeners about it? Yeah, people were stoked, and he went on the Joe Rogan podcast, which for if people aren't familiar, yeah. it's basically like the biggest podcast in the world. And he was debating with this guy who I don't know why he had this guy on his podcast, but the guy is an acupuncturist and they bring him on as a nutritional expert, which hmm. made no sense to me. So they got to have James come on from Game Changers and actually debunk the debunking. Um, and he absolutely crushed it so much to the fact that Joe Rogan, I don't know if he actually did this or not, but he almost took down the original version that he recorded with this acupuncture guy about nu- about nutrition. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Oh, that'd be crazy. Yeah, he wow. like, totally crushed it. What's this podcast like called? Uh, Joe Rogan podcast. You know the Joe Rogan podcast. It was like four Jay. hours long, but I, I listened to I it over the course of a couple of bike rides. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. I have to catch up on Game Changers and Joe Rogan. Yeah. Game Changers, you'll, you'll finish and you'll do the classic thing after you've heard some like vegan-based propaganda. It's like, get rid of the dairy. Take <laughs> Throw it away. <laughs> and stay Always right. no cheese. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so there you go. Oh, so you so you back to the original topic. So we we digress so much on this show. It's kind of our thing, I guess. But um, so basically, you've been doing turbo stuff right now. Yeah. Uh, train a road. You normally you just train a road, don't you? You yeah, you don't swift. Yeah, train a road. And uh, well, the reason one of the reasons I don't swift is because I'm crazy competitive. And actually, my husband uses swift, and he'll be riding the trainer next to me, and just watching. What's happening? I, I can't. I can almost not stand it because I just want to kill everybody. So <laughs> wait, I, what do you mean? He would ruin like, I just want to like go hammer, and I I can't be doing that right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Just yeah. change yeah, your okay. change your weight to reflect your yeah. race weight, so your watts per kilo. Oh yeah, or... am I uh my my watts FTP watts are down by like this is this is super geeky. Do people want to hear about this? Oh, sure. Me and yeah. me and Shane are all over this stuff. Right. So my, F- my FTP is down by around fifty watts. And Whoa. my weight, yeah, wow. yeah, like, and I'm calculating that based on my respiratory frequency, um, how fast I'm breathing, mm-hmm. and that's actually, I don't like, it's really hard to calculate right now. But my my lungs are smashed, so I can't really breathe. Um, ah. But you need to be able to breathe to put out power. So yeah. I'm kind of going off of the limiter, which is my respiratory system, and then my weight is up. Like I said, depending on the day, twenty to twenty five pounds. So my, if we want to get even more geeky, my watts per kilo is down by like one, it was like 4.6 or 4.7. And now it's like three point, like three or 3.4 or oh, something wow, like wow. that. So, but that's well, not why I'm on Zwift. I'm not on Zwift because I, I just, I will be like just wanting to hammer. Um, so instead I get caught up on Netflix. <laughs> oh, now this is going to be hilarious because this is going to be a perfect uh, way of comparing to the listeners of how fit you are and how fit I am, because I did a new FTP test at the beginning of the year. I, um, admittedly, I have kind of had maybe a couple months off of not really doing anything, but my FTP went up to the highest it's ever been, and that number was three point five watts per kilo. So basically, eight and a half months pregnant, Sonia Looney, who is <laughs> pumping blood for two people. It's almost as strong as I am right yeah. now, which kind of blows my mind. Riding like, Sedona pregnant when Sedona, all of it is hard for both you and I. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, big time chain. Yeah. Which, oh, I, I looked the wrong easy. way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Yeah. But 4.6. Wow. Now, 
Sonia, Shane always wants to not talk about this anymore, but he used to be big time fitness. He's done Ironmans and the like. And yeah, he was wearing my Iron Man shirt today. Oh, Where's like every. I- Where's the tattoo? <laughs> I, ha- I have not got it yet. I- it's in the plans for this Why? winter. I'm incorporating it into. I don't want the standard tattoo, but yeah, I'm incorporating <laughs> it in. You should get like an Iron Man. Like, well, you could get Iron Man, the actual co- the comic, and have that. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like everyone will know you're an Avengers fan at the same time. Iron so Man's what was? Cool. What was your what was your uh, was per kilo Shane at your peak? So I was 135 pounds at five nine, which wow. is six, sixty about sixty two kilograms, and my FTP was three hundred watts. Oh, you were yeah, you're over what I was. So I was at four point eight, but <sighs> now I'm like 160 pounds. <laughs> Probably much happier. What's that? Probably much happier in life. <laughs> I definitely am much happier, but my watts per kilo, let's see. Now I'm, I think I'm at about 250 watts for my, yeah, I think you and oh. I are the same, Paul, right? Uh, that sounds about, yeah, that sounds exact. I'm like two, I think 258 is was my FTP as a okay, number. Okay, so you're stronger than I am. So yeah, but so- by marginal. So it's Sonia, like Shane, Shane is the most humble person about man biking. I have never seen someone be able to power up like short, punchy climbs. It's just like, I don't know, he has like a turbo boost or like some nitrous oxide or something and he consumes it at the moment. That was the weirdest thing. Way up. That was the weirdest thing about transitioning from road cycling and Ironman. Because you know, Sonia, like the endurance, you push 70, 80% for as long as you can. You don't like go pushing your VO2 threshold all the time. So I was used to doing low watts for a long amount of time and then mountain biking. It's like, you can't, you can't do that. You're spiking all over the place. Yeah. There's some criticisms in how, um, like people train different ways. I don't road ride at all. I only mountain bike on trails because that's what I love. Um, and I also want to say that I think Watts per kilo is kind of BS (laughs) in in real life. Like maybe like (laughs) more controversy in digital world Watts per kilo. Okay. But like there in mountain biking, especially there and in road racing, there's strategy and all that, but in mountain biking, like there's skill level, there's, there's knowing how to pace properly. There is what, what you just said, being able to power up steep and punchy things, having this one number that is based on a test that isn't even anything like mountain biking. It, it, it does. It isn't going to say anything about how fast you're going to be in a mountain bike race. Oh yeah. Hmm. I guess so. But I get maybe, on that number to get higher. <laughs> maybe off the line at a fire road start or something. But I mean, yeah. I mean, and there's nutrition. Like there is just so many. There's so many variables. So watts per kilo. We can geek out all day about it, but really, it doesn't really mean that much. <laughs> mm. It's just. I guess it's just a non-race result way of quantifying. Yeah, like how how fit you are or powerful Paul, or whatever. Paul just likes to see that he's improved by w- what? How many watts per kilo? Did you by? I already, I've already done the maths. So it's twenty yeah. percent year on year. That's awesome. It's nice to see improvement, but yeah, yeah. To measure improvement. It's useless, it Paul. It's yeah, it's pointless. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of it, I think it's all it's all mental. Like I swear, like I most of the time when I go riding, I'm just like, yeah, whatever. Like I don't try when I go mountain biking. That's actually my new, well, I guess, a resolution of some kind. Is I would just want to try more when I go mountain biking and not just be like, "Yep, yeah, cool, <laughs> I'm just rolling if, around." If you try too hard, it screws you up. Because like I did some enduro racing and I was trying really hard and I kept crashing because I was trying too hard. Yep. Uh, yeah, but I don't even get to that point. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> got to get your competitive juices flowing here (laughs) oh i get so competitive what did you i don't know if you've seen any of my bc bike race videos but like uh, let me in fact let's talk about it because you've done the race you know how it is like (laughs) people can't freaking ride most of the time were you guys there together like at the same race oh no you didn't didn't do it this year no Uh, i tried i i couldn't get in what no they i was i was not in the club i wasn't in Mm. You just call Paul. He pulls the strings. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think, I don't know. I'm probably not going to get invited again. Cause I was like, would I do this again? I was like, eh, not right now. 
<laughs> That's normal though. It's called type two fun. Yeah, yeah. No, it was um, like the first few days were amazing, and then it was just got too gravel road. Like that stage to from Seychelles, the I was like, nah, this isn't this isn't cool. Anyway, <laughs> and one of the uh, this guy it was Spanish, and like I, every day, I already like the start. Sorry, sorry <laughs> to the Spanish people, but I already love. The, I already know how this is gonna end. <laughs> yeah, of course you do. I mean, I knew he was Spanish because he had a flag on his back, Shane. So you can see everyone's name as you're behind them, right, oh, Shane? Nice. Um, apart from me, because I didn't put, I didn't want to put holes in my jersey, so I didn't <laughs> put my back plate on. <laughs> Just get the glue, uh, the spray glue. Yeah. Okay, keep going. It's, mm, don't know. It's okay. a road rage. Uh, anyway, and I'm coming down leave of absence, Sonia, as you will know, because you are a part-time Squamish re- resident, also. Yes. And. Uh, I actually passed 10 people on that trail, which I thought was hilarious. Um, and then, yeah, this one guy, I was like, hey, rider. And as per usual, he would not pull over. And I'd be <laughs> like, hey, hey. And then I was just like, I was yelling, stop, <laughs> like pull <laughs> over. Because there were so many points where he could have pulled over. And like in an enduro race, like if you – even hear the hint of someone behind you Forever. you're up you are over yeah you stop immediately mm-hmm. most this north americans didn't... move over most europeans yeah. will not move hmm. no no no. Uh, uh, as a for still for this moment i'm considered a, a eu member okay well i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like it's i think i i i do think it's a discipline thing not a country thing i think it's that because people are like, well, like I can't ride this trail any faster, so why would I pull over? Like, mm, they're not going to get that far in front of me. I bet it's that mentality. Anyway, I keep, I re- kept, keep saying like, pull over, and then people in the comments were just like, they hated you. You're taking this way too seriously. <laughs> and I'm like, the guy ruined your fun on the downhill, man. You have to like ride up the, you have to ride yeah. up. You want to have fun on the downhill, and then they don't move. Oh man, tell me oh. about it. I yeah, had, some I had lots of anger from years of of this. So sorry, everyone. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I could, I like, and that was the thing. It's like it's, I, but okay, let's discuss this. I think the people that commented negatively on that were they think it's like trail etiquette, right? It's just you know riding a normal thing, but this was a race, and it's different. Over. Yeah. yeah, it's it's who it's, can, it's a race who can get to the finish first. And if someone is not going as fast as you, then it's like get out of the way. But a don't lot they of talk people... about that in orientation, like race orientation? Oh yeah. Yeah. They did. They bring but it up. Clearly multiple people weren't listening. Mm. But um but I got so negative. In fact, someone even emailed one of my sponsors to say how poorly I was behaving. And I was like I went to them and I was like, watch the video. Like, <laughs> you guys race harder than I do. Like, there's no way. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's it. Like, people don't understand the etiquette. Like, you know, riding on a trail, obviously I would never do that. But in a race, it's different. And then add, um, if you were a female, it's a hundred Oh, God, words. I can't even like, imagine. Yeah, because they, like, usually you don't even want to say it. You just hope they hear you or, like, some people have a, a bell they ring or something because if they hear a female voice, no, no, they 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 try and just speed up and think that's going to be good enough. Mm. Yeah, no, <sighs> sorry, Man. it's not good enough. <laughs> These are things you, we're thinking about. Have you encountered any racing situation? You know, you're too nice, Shane. You're. I don't think you'd ever be competitive in a race. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! But what was Iron Man like? Surely, surely there was some anger in the Iron Man. Uh, it, Iron Man for me was all about myself. So whether there was anger or turmoil, it was all I- inside. There's so much space on the road in Iron Man. See what I mean, Sonia? Like this guy just sits on the fence. Well, the he's time. true though. In the Iron Man, there it is an open road. But if you're on a narrow single track and someone's ruining your flow, would you yeah. get mad? Me? Yeah. Would you get frustrated? I would. Even if it was like race, like your video, I probably would have just stopped and give him a gap. <laughs> enough that i would gauge like okay now i'll enjoy this section and i am i'm just, maybe i'm way too cautious and i'm more focused on having fun when i've gotten serious in races i mainly just i end up crashing and crashing is slow so <laughs> i don't if know if i was 
I was thinking before. if I was going to do that race again, I would do it as a duo and I would only want to do it with Shane because be he's the, I think you're the only person that would c- keep me chill and be like, yeah, that's <laughs> just, it's just be like, I'm like, Shane, let's go. It's like, yeah, whatever. Like, it's just a race. Have, let's have fun. Have beer. Let's take eight hours to do this day. Who cares? Yeah. Well, maybe <laughs> not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here we go. Then we would have like, to stop. For, we'd have to stop for poop breaks often for me. <laughs> what? Oh, oh no. yeah. Endurance fighting. Iron Man was a very messy situation for lots of people. <laughs> the, the running, oh my God. Like the running part? Oh, yes. 100%. Oh, yeah. Porta potties everywhere, full to the brim. <laughs> oh, no. Did you, have, I, you, have you done an Iron Man, Sonia? Nope, but I have done some running. I'm not a, I don't like the water. I don't want to swim. Mm-hmm. And I actually don't want to ride a TT bike either. So, yeah. But yeah. Running, well, I can relate. <laughs> I hate running. The only running I do nowadays is with my bike. When I can't, well, I don't even run. I'm probably just walking. Ah, I don't know, man. Okay, why don't we get into today's topic? So, every, Sonia, every episode we kind of decide what the clickbait's going to be for the episode. Hey, what's what's your tactic for clickbait? Do you do do you clickbait at all, or do you just kind of say who the guest mm, is on your podcast? I just kind of try to make the title what it's about, so that it, you know, it explains what it's about. <laughs> What do you what do you think was your what do you think was your best title? Uh I I have to say my titles probably aren't amazing. I can't think I can't think of one that stands out in my mind. Oh, here's uh, one. Yeah. Um actually someone left a, a negative comment on my uh podcast reviews because of this co- because of this title I chose and I knew that it was going to be a little bit inflammatory. But this is what the podcast was about and it was animal protein causes cancer. That was the that was the title oh, of the podcast. Whoa. It does. Whoa. That is some <laughs> serious clickbait. Oh, please! I'm looking for it right now. And that, but that's what it's that that's, that's what, what it was it about. about. It was with this PhD researcher from Cornell, and he's the guy that uh, founded the China study. And I won't go into detail because people probably don't care. But yeah, that that's what it was about. If people want to check out more? Go find it. Mm. Oh, now wow. I want to know which is it the casein plus uh, others. It's casein. It's it's any animal protein. They could actually turn the cancer on and off. And the crazy thing about this guy was he did his PhD in how you need animal protein, and he was able to overcome his bias by the research that was being done in China and the Philippines. Whenever he started seeing this trend, wow! So it's pretty cool. So wow. he he completed his PhD, or he discovered this while he was trying to prove this thesis. No, this was like far after his PhD. He was, you know, wow. faculty at Cornell, and yeah. I, so I I actually asked him like, how did you overcome that bias? Because you believe that animal protein is good for you. So how did you overcome that bias? Because that would be hard to do. Oh yeah, I've read the China study. I think like eight years ago or something. I'll have to go back and. Maybe I'll just get the refresher course on the Sonia Looney. Uh, there you go. And he's uh, 86. Podcast. Oh, and whoa. he changed his opinion at 86. No, no, wow. he was younger when he changed his opinion. But well, like oh, 20 years ago. Cur- but he's currently 86 and he's like still working and super healthy. He's he's pretty cool. Wow. Maybe maybe our clickbait should be Sonia has turned <laughs> us into plant based <laughs> vegan. What else? Well, hold on. We could, hey, we could, we could, Shane, let's capitalize on this clickbait. You know what I mean? <laughs> let's do it. Let's say world champion mountain biker says meat gives you cancer. Uh, like, there it is. There it is. <laughs> well, Michael, I, Michael I, hear Cunningham consen- the fifth. I hear consent. Yeah, Michael Cunningham the fifth. Timestamp it now. Clickbait. Oh, yeah. So, Sonia, we have this a regular listener called Michael Cunningham, but I, I decreed one day that it sounds like he should be some kind of like, um, uh, aristocrat. So I said, it sounds like Michael Cunningham the fifth, and then he changed his username. And then every week, because <laughs> we have a we have a title, and then we don't talk about the joke. Originally, was that we don't talk about the subject until like five minutes during the end, <laughs> 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 which was we thought it was hilarious. But then he would, he would always timestamp where the actual title was because people would actually complain and not get the joke. But that's uh, that's the state of the internet. So. Yeah. Um, I have a question. So actually, my favorite thing. So I've been, um, well, recently I started eating fish, but I've um, I've kind of quashed that off again. I rarely eat fish now. Um, and you I've got rid of it. Yeah. What quashed. was that word? It means like you've got rid of, like, 
you've stopped it. Like you've you kind of like crush, I guess. You could oh, maybe that's the title. It. New word Paul of the day. cancer with Paul words. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> You're like, what? Quash what did he do? There. I had to Google this. Okay, keep going. You quashed uh, fish. Quashed, uh, yeah. And I've I've pretty much got rid of dairy apart from the old pizza or whatever. Um, but my favorite thing uh, with people, they always say is, where do you get your protein from? And do you know my favorite response? If I may share this with you is um, I asked them, what's the word for being protein deficient? And there is no such word because no one has ever been protein deficient. I think. There's, there's <laughs> another funny thing. There, there actually is something um, that do, it does exist, but not in North America. And there is a word for it, but I don't know it for protein deficiency. Um, oh, there however, is? Oh, damn. there is, but it's okay. I, nobody knows what the word is. However, oh, perfect. You know, this is funny because nobody ever cares about your protein intake when you're, unless they find out you're eating plant-based or vegan. No one ever talks about like, oh, like where do you get your protein whenever you're eating re- like whatever, quote, regular. <laughs> yeah. I Googled it and it is called, wait for this. It's almost close to the word of the day. It's called quash your core. K W F A S H. You used the word quash a second ago too. Yeah. I know. That's, I know. That's creepy. Quash your Although core. This is is this a is, severe form of malnutrition associated with deficiency in dietary protein. So it's actually spelled K W. K W Q A. Yes. Just to to make it, but it's it's such a ridiculous word. Even I'm just looking at it. It's spelled K W A S H I O R Batman symbol Q Z three. It's so straight. <laughs> Some weird Filipino island made it up, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, uh, Shane is half Filipino. He wants yep. every. He makes sure everyone knows about it. It it's is because from the Philippines, though. Like, and that that's oh, where that doc- that's where that doctor, um, the PhD guy T. Colin Campbell was doing his research and discovered this thing about animal protein because he he saw these people are protein deficient and that's how it all started. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, so interesting. I no, that. I have. It would be. Um, do you have a, a plant based as a whole a topic? Like, I don't know if you've noticed. Um, so, GCN, the road biking YouTube channel, they're going big time vegan. Have you noticed this? If you subscribe to them, I don't subscribe to them, but some of the Tour de France riders have sent me emails like asking for my advice. So, it doesn't oh. surprise me. Yeah. That's Hold on, cool. Shane. Shane knows all the roadies. Well, not Shane all knows them. you do. You do. We were at Sedona I Festival. I, just, I don't think I should say. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Well, we were at, we were at there's Sedona. Yeah, we were at Sedona Mountain Bike Festival, and we go to Floyd's of Leadville, the CBD guy, and Shane just walks over like this. Anyone know who you are? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of the guys. You know Dave's a brisky, right? Uh, not personally, but I know, oh. I know of him. Yeah. 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 He works for Floyd's now. And it's, I talked to him and he's like, yeah, you know, like Tour de France rider doesn't even get noticed at all at a mountain bike festival. And it is awesome. <laughs> was he, was he really, I think I asked you, he was, was on the he like, team. He was part of that train. He was on the, he was a young kid. He was like a young yeah, kid. Yeah. But he was, uh, I don't know. Unproven. Take- unproven. Is that what we can say? <laughs> it was, it was un, unproven. Sonia's like, <laughs> if you wanted I, I a actually career. Don't know. I, I don't know. I don't really follow the road biking very much. My husband always has to explain who things are to me. In fact, you'll, you'll like this. There's a guy, the lion of Flanders, I think. Sorry if I sound like an idiot, but, um, <laughs> Fa- Fabian Conchalara. Li- no, it's like an older guy, but oh. he was, he started like commenting and following and, I, and I said to my husband, like, who's this guy? And he's like, oh, that's the Lion of Flanders. Ho- holy crap. And I was like, oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, yeah, I have no idea. We're, so, we're pretty much man bikers here But now. they have no idea who, like, who we are, so. Oh, yeah. that's true. I mean, Shane like, has no idea who the man bikers are as well. Johann, it's, the, it's my favorite thing. Johan Moussou? Yeah, oh, yeah, that's his name, yeah. I don't know how to oh. say his last name, but, yeah. I googled yeah, it. I don't know that. I don't know the line. Of Johan, if you're listening, I apologize. <laughs> if he's ever, listening, yeah. wow. That's yeah. all I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> now I think I, I always am so amused because, like, I'm I was part of a pretty core cool world of mountain biking, right? Um, I'm not at all anymore. But like Shane and and the other guy Josh, they have no idea who any mountain bikers are. 
and it just made me laugh so much like i'd be around and i just start saying oh have you seen like let's say have you seen like brennan fairclough's new thing and they're like who's, who's that, that? <laughs> i'm like is he what? a new youtuber <laughs> <laughs> does he have a youtube channel <laughs> I think it's good though. It keeps everybody humble. Like we all just ride bikes. Like yeah. mountain bike fame or cycling fame is, I don't know. Well, okay. It's so funny, but it's it's because I come from a world where like everything revolves around it. Do you know what I mean? And here, here it is. Like the same sport. You know, pe- just people doing it, and they have no idea, and they have like no interest, and it's just like, and I just it just makes me laugh so much <laughs> because it's just like so removed from everything else it's such a small sport but there's so many different areas and like things that you can get into it yeah. it's i do find it quite fascinating well i want to know if you have like pro top level tour de france riders or you know top level people in their discipline asking you for tips on going plant-based what, what is your what are your like top three tips Ooh, nice great question shane well first i send them my cookbook so they know what to make um plug plant power tribe but at, you know, what, what I really tell them, though, is number one, you need to make sure that you're eating enough calories because a lot of times people are like, I'm tired. I'm not getting enough protein. But that's not, that's you don't get energy from protein. You get energy from carbohydrates. So people just tend to not eat as much because you get full faster. Um, then number two, I say, look at your plate and make sure that you have a whole grain. Make sure you have a tofu tempeh or a bean of some kind and then vegetables. And then if you want to add in extra calories, if you need them, which you do, if you're doing lots of exercise, add like healthy fats, like nuts, avocados, seeds, make your sauce with like tahini um, and eat as much as you want. And that's the awesome thing about eating whole foods is like you can literally eat as much as you want and you need to eat a lot. So that's pretty much my spiel. I love it. Yeah, you can't go wrong. Okay, so we were also, I wanted to have Sonia on here so we could have, so Shane, if you remember, your paramour, the crashing mum, brought up uh, about women in mountain biking. Can you remember what the topic was? She always is. Oh yeah, all the time. (laughs) Waking up in the morning. Morning, honey. Shane. Oh, Oh, I, we were talking about the bro culture in mountain biking. Oh, that was it. Yeah. Of course, the bro culture. So it, it, it catch Sonia up in what we were talking about. Well, I, th- I think in general, there's kind of just this feeling that mountain biking is a male, a, a white male dominated sport that lacks diversity in race and sex, gender. Should, uh, but it, but yeah, in, just in general. And then for people outside of that, it kind of feels a little bit either intimidating or that the writers that are in it or on the trails are intimidating because of the, the bro culture. Am I making any sense? Mm-hmm. Do you yes. feel it? Do you see it? Oh, yeah, I definitely see it. Especially when they're like, you shouldn't be out here when you're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so what do you... Um, hmm, I don't know. What were we trying to... I can't remember what we were trying to gain i think yeah what do you what about the split in man biking in term we'll we'll call it gender for the purpose of this discussion what do you feel uh is the split in gender man biking i think it's different for recreational versus racing um so i don't know that I, I would actually be interested to look at um all of the statistics of bicycles that were purchased men versus women but in the racing scene i would say it's probably like 25% women, 75% men. Mm. Ooh, that's more, I mean, I, the thing is I live in such a bubble where I've only spent time in like real mountain bike meccas, if I can humble brag so eloquently. <laughs> and it's, it, to me, it feels like 50, 50. I mean, in Squamish, it feels sometimes like there's more women doing it than men. And then, you know, Shane, you said that you never see women. I think that was Josh. Uh, I don't, uh, I mean, but then, but then we figured out that Josh just doesn't see anyone when he yeah. goes out mountain biking. And then I, that see, was- I see quite a bit because I, I mean, I live in Grand Junction, Fruta. I'm real close to Moab. So I do see quite a bit. I mean, and Brian BKXC mentioned that was probably because we're in destinations that we're seeing that split. Mm-hmm. Well, we're also yeah. talking about recreational riding versus racing. And I yeah. think that there, you will see more women on the trail, um, because women, I, I don't know, I don't want to generalize and I don't know the reason, but I think that uh, w- uh, women tend to not race as much as men. 
But the women that do race, would you say, are incredibly competitive? I'd say they're competitive. Um, not everybody is like incredibly competitive, but people just like a goal. It's like why why do why are there so many women running marathons and doing triathlons? It's it's fun to be part of a community and it's fun to have something that you're striving for. But I think in mm. mountain biking, um, I think there's a few things that we could do to make it better. And, and this also goes for race is, is better representation. So if you look at most of the media out there, it's white dudes riding bikes. You don't see women being featured. And if you do, it's very like stereotypical. It doesn't show women like absolutely crushing it. Like you would see, like they would personify a man. Um, they would personify probably a female in advertising with like other females, like hanging out, laughing, not absolutely crushing the trail. Um, so having more women in media, having more women in positions in the bike industry, like most of the people that work for these companies are men. So having more opportunity for women in those, uh, those roles. And another thing that people could do is like, we all have, we all have biases. We talked about biases with, um, you know, the plant-based thing. And like, whenever you see a woman on the trail, like you might just, it, because of your bias, you might think she's slower than you, or she's not as good of a technical rider. And I've come up against this so many times, like people think that I'm not going to be very good because I'm a girl, or I'm not going to be able to go fast on the downhill because I'm a girl. Or um, they'll, they'll say, oh, like you got chicked, you know, th those types of comments are just not mm -hmm. helpful comments. And I think if men can start looking at women as equals and yes, there are, you know, some physiological differences between men and women, but if we can start looking at women as equals on the trail, instead of like, Oh, you're good for a girl. Um, that's a big distinction and just having mm. more respect. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I mean, as someone who regularly gets been by, uh, people with a of a female gender all the time i have never said that oh you got chucked but uh, yeah it definitely does happen and i think um i actually think um given my kind of wide um uh, connections in the industry i'd actually say it was approaching 50 50 for gender splits like I'm, I'm 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 talking like every company do you know, in my in marketing, I'm going to I'm going to drill it down even more because that's my cross section that I know. I mean, if you were going to go to like service, like, do you know, what I mean, like workshop service, then yeah, for sure. That's male dominated. But as you talked about, you know, it's it's not just the you know, the physical differences. There's been years of, you know, the difference in how um, boys are brought up and how girls are brought up boys are told to like toughen up and you know keep doing it and like that kind of mental conditioning is going to play uh in invaluable later on when you're trying to compete at a sport that's an athletic endeavor so i think like that the, the, a lot of the mental kind of um oh, what's the word i'm looking for not co not mental coaching but being brought up with that kind of mentality of like really trying and pushing yourself i think there's that disparaging um and that whole kind of yeah just the, well, how does sonia how do you feel about it sonia do you I actually, agree yeah, i actually don't agree with that at all um women you know girls play sports and girls are really competitive when they play their sports as well and it's not like hey we're all friends it's like yeah you i played soccer growing up and everybody was really competitive hmm. but i think like as a hot again as a whole kind of um, and this is this has come from my my friend Kristen, who often educates me about the importance of balance in gender roles. And Kristen does bring up the point. It's like, so we're going to get real controversial here for mountain biking, I guess. So recently, there was um, there's been a couple of transgender athletes coming in, and you know it's um, a male switching to a female. And the females have been, you know, like, oh, what's going on? And then that kind of thing. So it's not just, it's like, yeah, the UCI have the measure for testosterone in the, the body and they have that limit and that's how they qualified. But actually there's this whole other, like, that's what I'm talking about, the mental side of it that is affecting it. And it is a different way of being brought up and conditioned. That kind of mental conditioning from a young age as a whole I think it's reasonable to say it is different because there's lots of people of like, you know, the generation of parents bringing up kids now 
or like let's even say people my age like my my parents generation who like the equality was nowhere near in balance i mean it's not in balance right now but even more so back then mm -hmm. and that was like you know boys are given action man and told to play sports and girls are treated differently so i think that shift as well will bring more balance to a competitive competitive world of mountain biking for sure later on yeah and i think that women now just have more of a voice than we used to because of the mm. internet i mean we're able to write our own articles start our own podcasts like lead by example um you know some people don't handle it very well online <laughs> like some people say oh it always oh, comes yeah. down to women complaining that they don't have opportunity but i know for a fact that I have to work way harder than the, my my male counterparts in terms of sponsorship and and being a female in the sport, and I know that of other women as well. And I'm not complaining about it. I'm it's just that's how it's been. Oh, it's just fact. That is, yeah. of course, a hundred percent. That's and how also, it is. And also, in, in terms of like your comment about women in marketing roles, like I've been a self managed pro athlete for six years, and I've only worked with one or two women ever, and that's with like fifteen to twenty sponsors per year. So. I actually don't agree that there's lots of women in, in these marketing roles. Mm. So the representation I'll, I'll representation in yeah, companies I mean, and online needs to change. And these are just this is just N of one, right? I'm one person and you're one person and we don't we don't know what the actual facts or statistics are and it's experiential, but um but yeah, like you you there's a, a great woman I had on my podcast named Ayesha I I Ayesha, sorry if I'm saying her name wrong, McGowan, and she's all about uh, representation. She's an African American female, and she's been really pushing hard to have more Black women and or Black people, even, but especially Black women um, in the media. Because if if a, a Black girl wants to start riding a bike and she looks around and doesn't see anybody like her, it's it's kind of weird. So, like mm. being able to say, "Hey, everybody belongs here," is really important. Yeah, mm, for sure. Do you know? There's actually. Um, Again, this is my source. My source is my friend Kristen. There has been a study that talks about the influence of um, male and female athletes, and I think if I'm just going to generalize this study, I don't know it well enough, but it was shown that men, male athletes, will only influence male um, members of the public. However, female athletes will actually influence male and female people. And there was no difference in the amount of influence that a male athlete or a female athlete had. Hmm. And that was that was proven, like in a paper that was published. I'd like However, to people just because showing that to sponsors or to brands is important. Oh yeah, I've I've heard that. Like, well, we don't really have that many female customers, but I'll say, wait a minute, I, I can't tell you how many bikes I've sold to men. <laughs> Oh yeah, I I remember actually buying a pair of six six one knee pads because Rachel. I remember Rachel Atherton had them on. I think, like it was actually like, oh, I'll buy these because Rachel Atherton has them. Like I remember how that's how I uh, rationalized my purchase in my brain. Well, and I don't think that the uh, like gender specific bike sales represent women actually buying it like there are a lot of, even my even my wife the crashing mom she says if she was to ever buy santa cruz or juliana you buy the santa cruz everything's the same except what the saddle and maybe the suspension tune i don't know if it's even that but mm. resale no, there route. is there is a difference there is a difference and i think they use things like different grips but again like That's is point. that generalized is that actual scientific fact that but most of them the are whole... buying the santa cruz because they're going to sell it in a year or two i don't Oh, ah, okay. So there is that. However, I will come back at you and say that brands like Liv and Juliana, like they have had the most amount of success by se separating their brands. Certainly, but I don't think they've represented all of the female customers. I agree because there's a lot of brands that they make a, f a women's bike and this is the standard, like... Juliana and Liv have done an amazing job making high-end women's products. But if you go uh, look online at most bike brands and they have a women's model, it's always less than. It's always like, oh, well, it's carbon, except for we have an aluminum rear chainstay or it has XT instead of XTR on it. And it's ridiculous because women don't want heavier bikes. Like we don't, we don't want the crappier version. And number two, like we weigh less. So the weight of the bike matters. Yeah. And if you like were to buy, sell a car, you're not going to see a woman coming in and be like, Oh, I'm going to sell her the crappier version of this car. <laughs> so I, I actually don't understand the reasoning um, just in general, why brands will say, let's make a less than women's version. I think it's a problem in the bike industry. 
Mm. But then are people, I mean, I would always say that if people are buying it, then they would, then they would make it. Do you know what I mean? I, I do. Like, yeah. And, and a lot how of, do you know? A lot of it comes from demand. Um, well, I think I'm going to throw it out there and say that these, the people, people will know more than you or I in terms of what is actually being bought and sold. And that's information that they obviously use the for their benefit. Brands knew that. Yeah. Me, I, I don't know how like brands are making their decisions, so I can't speak in an educated way about it. I'm just saying observationally what I've noticed. And as a writer who would want the highest end product possible, the frustrations mm. that I've had. So, mm -hmm. Hey, here's a question. You've done a podcast with World Cup champion, Kate Courtney. She's mm -hmm. but a, a world champion. I, Shane's already told me off for saying a former world champion. <laughs> <laughs> UCI I world never champion. Knew. Yeah. <laughs> okay, UCI world champion. Uh, Kate, did you did you talk to her about kind of um, female focused uh, branding or anything? Uh, we didn't talk about equipment specifically. I, I honestly can't remember what we talked about because it was over a year ago, I think. Um, but I know that we did touch on female athletes, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, I can't remember the details. Okay. Um, yeah, I, that's, and I think that's another thing. I mean, I hate it, but guys always talk about gear and parts and stuff like this. In fact, Sonia, when I first started this podcast with these guys, I was like, no gear chat. Mm -hmm. We're not going to talk <laughs> about gear. That was the rule. And then actually for one week, I wasn't here <laughs> and they did it with someone else okay. and they, and they talked about gear. <laughs> And annoyingly, it's our most popular podcast that we've ever done, and I hated it. But well, I actually like talking about gear and um, like nuances between products, so I'm kind of guilty. Okay, why don't we just jump back into this then? Just to have a lighter subject. What um, what is, what are you most picky about on your bike? Oh, I would say either the suspension or the brakes. What about the suspension and the brakes? Uh, having something that works really well and that is that it's easy to tune. Oh, so for example, Shimano system, which is the <laughs> best. <laughs> I actually really uh, like the Shimano brakes. Like, I that's one of the main reasons I like working with Shimano is because I love the brakes. Yeah, they're actually amazing. I just did it. I just they're just working with me this year as well. And I just made a video about how easy they are to like service and, and bleed. Yeah, and change, ch yeah, they're they're so easy and they rely like take it from me. You don't want to be in the middle of nowhere and have your brakes go out. It's happened. Watch oh, my no. TED talk and you'll see a video. You've done a <laughs> TED talk as well. It was about this race in Nepal I did, and specifically about my brakes oh, failing. Yak attack. However, I will have to say that brakes are not designed to work at eighteen thousand feet, but. People with Shimano brakes didn't have any problem. Wow. Oh, there you go. That is a um, TED talk. We're going to link that below. Uh, that. Shane, it's Shane's job. Success. Shane, what? Shane's job is uh, putting putting in the clickable links. <laughs> and there's so many things to put in for Sonya this. SoniaLooney.com slash blog, Sonia Looney podcast, <laughs> Flat oh. Power Tribe, and Sonia Looney uh, TED talk. It's pretty Insert amazing. self promotion. <laughs> oh, who cares? Do, we do whatever we like. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. So we'll, we'll end this subject. Is what what um, advice could you give to um, male mountain bikers like myself and Shane in uh, what we can do to uh, reduce the disparage in male and female uh, involvement in mountain biking? I'd say just treat when you see women, treat them as an equal on the trail. And like be aware Done. and, and <laughs> yeah. try and be more mindful because we all have it. Even I have it. Be aware of the biases that you have when you see a woman mountain biker. Mm. Well, I look, I'm, I'm kind of uh, to be a, um, being that guy, but I'm going to be that guy mm. living in Squamish. There's so many, like I prefer going and riding with the girls because it's just more fun and it's less intense, but they're all better than me. I'm still like, please. Please go on ahead. Go in front. I, I want to go to Squamish you. and ride with the girls so they can show me how to ride. Like seriously. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Like you got to. Uh, well, you got to go riding with Annie, our mutual. Although I know. You've never, have you we, met her yet? We've met, but we haven't ridden because she was injured, and then I was pregnant and not going to Squamish as much. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Shane, Annie is that, you know, that lady that crashed in one of my videos and had to go to hospital. Oh, it's yeah. The, yeah, that one. They had, they, Sonia and her knew each other over Instagram before meeting in person. <laughs> Instagram friends. Yeah, I, I see some of her lines and I want her to, I want to follow her because I'm too afraid to do it on my own. <laughs> oh, there's so, there's so many shredders here. But, well, so, so, Shane. Mm -hmm. It's time to move on to everyone's favorite segment. Oh, I can't wait. And what segment is that, Shane? Well, let's just go into the song. Is it you? Is it me? It's the Joey of the Week. Okay, it's time for Joey of the Week. Mm, Sonia, uh, you, we've got three entries into Joey of the Week this week. So what we'll do is we'll read the user submissions and then we'll talk about our own Joeyisms that we've done over the last week. So Sonia, could you so please read the first entry in the top here? If okay. I'll just, I'll keep talking to pass the time and make it seamless to the moment <laughs> where it's time for you to read the comment. I, I am ready. So Mountain by MTB Alandin. Alan, you were right. Oh, he's a right. he's a regular. He's a regular. We debated for like an entire episode how you pronounced it. That's like You've Aladdin, it. but he's uh, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We've said it all. Yeah. He says he's gonna put his son forward for Joey of the week. Nico, my son, me, and two of my friends drove down to Salbach Hinterglem for a week of pure free ride and DH mountain biking in the summer of 2018. First run of the day, he rides up front, goes balls out, and crashes on the first wall. Wall ride, breaking his shoulder in the process. Spent the entire week in the hospital while we carried on riding. I don't know what PMSL is. Yeah, what's though. PMSL? It's uh, pissing myself laughing. Ah. Ah. <laughs> ah. SMH. Mm. Oh, going all out on your first day of a, of a DH that trip. Is, that is a great A, Jerry, move. And yes. Sonia, Shane is coming to Whistler for the first time ever this summer. Oh, yeah? Cool. His wife, crashing mom. Our favorite, uh, almost kind of like our, our Maris, I guess. And if you used to watch Frasier, Maris, she would oh, never yes. appear. Yes. There you go. She's like our Maris of the show, <laughs> uh, but nice. And she bought him tickets for Christmas. And we we all knew about it because she called us to check that we were, we were around. And I've told Shane he's going to, I know I've told him exactly what his first day in Whistler is going to be. <laughs> and he's going to, but he's going to, he's going to. It's gonna no. It's it's more of a script, not like a. Oh yeah, we're gonna go and send this. We're gonna send this. I mean, we're like we're gonna do a warm up trail, and then we'll do crank it up the jump trail, and then you'll finish that and be like, can we, can we do that one more time? And then we'll finish <laughs> that, and then you'll turn around to me and say, I could just do that all day, because that's what so many people have done. I don't know. Have you time. been to Whistler, Sonia? I have. Yeah, I did the. Bi- I've only done the bike park once, but. Um, yeah, I, I kind of like the other trails, like the like trail riding trails. Oh, you what, would. What are your What are your thoughts on uh, comfortably numb? Uh, it's pretty good. I mean, I think for if you want, if you're a cross country rider and you need kind of a trial by fire, that's a good one. But I think there's a lot of better trails um, than that one. But it depends on the bike you're riding. Do you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite trail off the top mm-hmm. of your head? I haven't ridden Whistler too much, so I don't know the names of the ones I've ridden, but they were no. they're with my brother in law and I and there were things where I was like, Oh my god, don't ride it. <laughs> I was that person, but oh. yeah, it was really fun. Shane probably, will too also be that person. I probably will be either overly mm-hmm. cautious or I might be like, Let's go send it. I don't know. It it could go either way. We'll see. Okay, yeah. Shane. All right. Who's Our buddy Pete for AZ underscore MTB says his Joey of the Week nomination, me, Pete for MTB. Pete, yeah, Pete. This needs to Pete. be studied scientifically, and I will try and explain the formula. You take the lack of rider skill and multiply, ba- multiply that by the capability of a high end demo bike, and oh, then no. subtract the combination of over enthusiasm times the value of a huckable drop. And divide by the number of trail walkers you see that we're trying to show off to. If the result is a negative, then you're going over the bars. I learned my lesson well on some rocky stuff at South Mountain in Phoenix. And I have left my DNA on the trail from several sections of my body. Mm-hmm. But I didn't break anything and I'll live to ride another day. Moral of the story, ride your bike, respect the rocks. Mm-hmm. I think uh, we all know from last year's Sedona, Arizona trip that uh, 
Paul and I know that very well, specifically Paul. Yeah, so, Sonia, I didn't like, I didn't like South Mountain. Uh, <laughs> I was having a bad, I, actually, I had a I bad time. It. Oh, you didn't like it because you're you're crashing, or because you just didn't like it? Uh, well, I just driven basically from Squamish to oh. Sedona, mm-hmm. and I was camping like an idiot. This year, I'm going to have the sweet van, so I can't wait. <laughs> yes. I was camping, and then I arrived at like midnight. Then these guys picked me up at like 7 a.m., and I was like, where are we riding in Sedona? And they're like, we're not. We're going to go to South Mountain in Phoenix. It's another two hours away. Oh. I was like, oh, great. Sedona was raining. It was unrideable. So, yeah, it was my first time in South Mountain, too, and I, I rather enjoyed it. I like the tech. I like the chink. Have you ridden in Grand Junction? Uh, Only a couple of times, actually. Okay. But you've seen the the Grand Junction trails. Yeah. Yep. Very similar to the Moab Jank. When Paul came out, he was just like, these are not trails. Trails are... <laughs> well, they're just not <laughs> steep. Yeah. No, they didn't have any trees. Like, this is what I just, like, I couldn't figure out. I just, for context, Shane lives in Grand Junction, Colorado. That's why he's yep. brought, yes. brought up I'm, those trails. I'm from the desert, so I, I totally get it. You get it. Oh, oh are you from mother. Albuquerque? Albuquerque, and then I yes. lived in I lived in Boulder for eight years before I moved up here. Nice. There you go. Okay, Sam Webb one. Sam Webb one. One of your hmm. one friends. Oh no, it just says he commented one week ago. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, too Sam bad. Webb. Maybe you can add a one at yep. the end. Add a one, Sam. I always love it when people do that. Like they will we'll say something about their username and then they change it the next week. <laughs> um, okay, I'll keep this one short, boys. And Sonia. Uh, I didn't take the time to measure my eyelet length. Shop mismeasured it. Oh. A 250 pound shock bought. And that's about $400. Realized two weeks later, then another bike shop tried to fit it. Uh, oh no so sam has bought the wrong size shock taken it to another shop and said fit this and i guess shop b is gone this won't fit that's go- that's as as far as they go that's a jerry move go back to shop a sam oh, hopefully is- you ordered it from them instead of just have them measured it and then order it online <laughs> So, yes, Sonia, this is a perfect example of when there is someone who's just had a crash and got unlucky, which is MTB Alandin's suggestion. And then there is the jury move, which is exactly what Sam has done, which is just like a stupid mistake, <laughs> mistake <laughs> that could have easily been taken care of by a little bit of due diligence. So who do you think should be jury of the week? I feel there's only one answer. Me? No, cast yeah. your vote. Yeah. Cast your vote. I'm I'm voting for Sam. Yeah. Oh yeah, Sam Webb. You get it, Sam. Week. Sam he was did. our uh, our listener of the week a while ago, right? He was the birthday boy. Oh, yeah, of course he was. Yeah. He was. Oh, I'm g- great to see, great to see he's such a fan for, of the podcast. Getting involved with being a Jerry. So for Joey's, great. for Joey's, our friend Kay Carter four by four, he sent us the place where Joey's reside. This is actually Paul's. Paul's uh, condo complex. Can you share the screen, Paul? Oh, wait. It's not. Is this one? Oh, oh, yes. Okay. For a minute, I was like, I hope this isn't actually right. Yep. For all yeah, of our viewers. I did see this. <laughs> Joey Court duplexes. And that's where you live, right? Uh, <laughs> yes, that is where I, I actually helped build it. I'm that much of uh, <laughs> embedded in it. I thought that was cute. Oh, it really was. Okay. Our Joey moments and Please, may I lead off here? Do it. So we didn't actually let um, we didn't actually get to the point where me or Shane talked about where we rode last week. Um, but who cares? That's <laughs> we don't. Yeah. So last night I went to the BMX track in Abbotsford, just outside indoor BMX track. I was very excited. I've been wanting to go here for a long time because I love riding BMX tracks. And I got into it. I was riding. I was like, this BMX track is great. I'm having a great time. I was actually going to make a video as well. And then I came around the second straight and there's this kind of like kind of tabletop that you can kind of like suck up and carry on or you can jump it. Anyway, I come over. And I just I guess I carved up the lip and tried to pedal for some reason at the same time. And my front wheel washed out really quick. And I, to the point, you know, that front wheel wash out where you haven't take you can't get your hands off the handlebars in time and you go. This is for, for visual people. 
and your hand like washes out and then you're doing this and you're still holding onto the bike that was me uh-huh. so Paddle right strength? now uh no i don't think i even had time no 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 front wheel was definitely washed so as you can see the tape is back and i have sprained another ac joint and i have to take oh. a week off and i've got like bruising all down my side luckily i was wearing my full face helmet and my head is perfectly fine so um mm. but yeah pure jury and i was there and all the kids were riding around and <laughs> like i had to walk off the middle of the track to go and sit down for a bit and everyone else is going around and i was the only mountain bike dirt jumper there as well so mm. it was like even more perfect jerry i like it well for me i've just been doing a bunch of snow riding mm, i don't know if <laughs> i had a, I don't know if I had on. Look, well we do okay. this every show as you say, oh, no, I don't think I've got it. Well, okay, so I I did put on like Here a bash go. guard slash chain retention thing on the bot on my bottom bracket. I don't think I spaced it out correctly because on the trail I, I did like a drop down feature and I backpedaled a little bit, which is kind of a no no if your chain's already questionably off of alignment, and it got all clogged up in the, not only the the chain retention on top but also in the bottom and behind. I, I had to remove like the whole thing off the trail side of the trail. 5 p.m. It's getting dark. <laughs> yes, yeah. there it is. I had, uh, uninstalled, uninstalled bike park part falls apart on the trail at the well, worst time. That it's is like a meant move, to retain the chain. So I was pissed that it didn't. Re- but I, I installed it incorrectly. So what did you do? You know what you did? It was it just the chain line that you got wrong, or it was the the actual retention slash bash guard on the bottom. I had it too far in, I believe. So what, it, what, it just is it an the MRP in. one? Yeah, it, uh, I mean, so it's got rollers on the bottom. No, it's not the one with the roller. Oh, okay. Yeah, it just has the retention on the bottom, but mm. I think it was too far in because it pulled it in. I I had to take that off and my chain guide on the top off. And how old's your chain? Oh, it's like two weeks old. Oh, yeah. Okay. It could have been a comp- it could have been a potential for chain suck. That's why I just I was- yeah I just switched it to XTR because I'm all about that XTR chain. Oh, who would love to shift under load? Anyway, yes, exactly. Sonia, you've got do to you have, have any. I think mine might win. Jane? Ooh. Yeah, maybe not though. So I have two in one day, which was today. <laughs> <laughs> so as you guys have heard, I'm riding the trainer mostly. And I was in the shower and I noticed that there's a bunch of grease on my left calf, not even the right drive side calf, but the left oh. calf. And I've well, had like this happen. Chain, like, like the chain line thing, like, like the chain, chain mark. Somehow on the yep. left. Yeah, on the left. And I've noticed this multiple times this week. So <laughs> grease on the left calf. And then while I was riding the trainer today, I had a towel on the trainer and I had one hand off and I went to grab the bar and I, my hand slipped and I almost crashed off the trainer. So. <laughs> you crashed off a stationary I, I bike. No, I didn't crash, but I almost did. My hand slipped and I thought people are worried about me riding these technical downhills. I might be crashing off the trainer. <laughs> oh my God. That's, so have you, have you figured out the mystery of the, was it on the inner calf as well? The inner left calf. I have, I have oh, no idea what? how this is happening. Like road bikers will put that there on purpose on their right calf. That's well, called the Cat Five mark for like super. Yeah, yeah. I don't know it's how. It's called I have a what? Cat, cat five, five, like it's you know, like the beginners. Yeah, so somehow oh. I'm getting Cat Five marks on the inner left of my leg. How was that happening? Oh, I'm a Joey. You, I'm, I'm a you, I'm a Joey with a pro license, guys. <laughs> are you dismounting? Like, are you putting your left? Are you somehow putting your Actually, left leg yes. over your top tube? Yes, I think I'm. I'm dismounting. Like, left. I have to dismount my bike a bit weird because my pelvis hurts from being pregnant. So maybe mm. I'm dismounting funny and somehow hitting my leg. Oh, that's no excuse. <laughs> that's no I'm excuse. Still very Joey. Do you wipe no. it off before your husband sees? And it's like, no. Oh, no. In fact, sometimes I just don't wash it off. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't notice it till I was in the shower. Oh, oh well, well, I think, Sonia, you're probably the winner there because those are some fantastic Jerry moves. Joe of the <laughs> week. On- honorary guest gets it. Thank goodness. Yes. <laughs> there you go. And uh, I guess um, there's, that's it. Uh, Shane, do you have anything else to add here? Mm. Or. Thanks for being here, Sonia. Thanks for the invite, guys. Don't we don't have the cliffhanger ending like we do, but there is oh. that 
Oh yeah, the one thing. Paul, do you want to mention it? Yeah, it's definitely 